Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. So before this video starts, I just want to say that I am really sorry for not uploading for over three weeks and for not finishing multiple series, the FPS one and the Blocks Fruits one, but uh, I will finish all of them and I'm going to try to do them uh, as fast as possible so that I can move on to something else. And yeah, let's do the intro. So this video, uh, we'll be covering uh, how to make this team choosing system in the Blocks Fruits series. So you can choose marines or pirates. I'm just going to choose pirates. And as you can see now, I'm in the pirates team. And also, we're going to add a double jump system so that we can uh, do more stuff in the movement later. Before this video starts, if you guys want to support me and want to have access to all of my project files, including the one you're watching right now, they will all be available on my Patreon in the Thunderbolt tier. Okay, so the very first thing we need to make a double jump script is to go to starter character script, which is inside starter player, and we will add a local script, and we will rename that local script to uh, double jump. And what we're going to do is we need a couple of services. So the first one is going to be user input service. So local user input service equals game clone get service user input service. And what we're going to do in here is we're going to get the character, so local character equals. And since this is our character scripts, any script you put in here will be inside of the player's character. So the character is going to be script.parent. And then we need to get the humanoid. So local humanoid. Actually, we might need to get the humanoid root part first. Humanoid root part equals character. Oh, wait for child humanoid root part. And local humanoid. And we can use some type checking, so we're going to do a con humanoid, just to get the auto correct, the auto complete, and it's going to be equal to a character, con wait for child humanoid. And now what we're going to do is we'll get a variable, we're going to create a variable, and it's going to be called jumps. And it's going to be set to 1. And what we're going to do now is we're going to do user input service, user input service dot input began, con connect function. And this is going to take two arguments. The first one is going to be the key. And the second one is going to be game processed event. Now what we need to do is we're going to check if key dot key code equals equals enum dot key code dot space and not game processed event then. So if we press space and game processed event is not set to true. We, uh, if you are wondering what a game processed event is, uh, so this basically makes it so that it doesn't so that when you're typing in the chat and you press space, it will not activate the double jump. Okay, so uh, if it's equal, equal to space and game processed and not game processed event, then we're gonna do if humanoid and humanoid root part. Then and what we're gonna do is if humanoid colon get state equals equals uh, enum dot dot humanoid state type dot uh, free fall. Then if jump jumps is greater or equal to one, then then jump jumps minus equals one, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do humanoid colon change state to enum dot humanoid state type dot jump not jumpy not jump sorry, and now we're gonna do humanoid dot state changed colon connect function and this is going to return the old state. And the new state, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do if new state equals equals enum dot humanoid state type dot landed then then what we're gonna do is jumps equals one. Okay, so we're gonna play to see if this works. I'm going to press play and wait for this to load, and we'll see if this works. Okay, so as you can see, this does work. I'm going to press uh, space for the first time and press it again, and as you can see, we can double jump. And also, if you're wondering how to make it so that you can jump higher, uh, you can actually go to starter player, I think, and you can set the jump, jump height to something like 20. And if you play the game now, you should be able to jump much higher. So as you can see now, if I jump, I'm able to jump much higher, but maybe 20 was a little too much. You might want to keep it at something like uh, maybe 12. Let's see if, that, if, if that's better. Okay, I think this is perfect. I don't think it, I don't think the player is able to jump that high, but it's still pretty balanced. Uh, let's see if the combat works. Okay, so it still works. You can still uh, press A to move to dash. Okay, so what we want to do now is the team choosing system. 
And the way we're going to do that is by adding a uh, frame to the main GUI. So we're going to add a frame and we're going to call this team select. So team select. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the size to 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So 1, 0, 1, 0. We're going to set the position to 0, 0, 0, 0. Background transparency is going to be 1. And what we're going to do now is we'll add a text button. Now, the first one is going to be pirates. So I'm going to make it around this big. And I'm just going to position it right here. We're going to use this handy plugin called Unit Conversion, which I'll leave a link to in the description. And just go to Unit Conversion and press scale while selecting the text button. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the... Also, I want to turn off the auto button uh, property because I, I don't like it. And what I want to do now is change the text to pirates text scale is going to be true uh, font is going to be something like Fredoka one and if you want to make this look better which which i actually will do you can just set the text to nothing and you can have a text label a separate text label inside of the text button which you will set the you'll uh, scale with the plugin again and we're going to set the background transparency to 1, the text scale property to true, and the text to pirates. And now as you can see it does look better. And the font, we want that to be for Doka 1. Okay, so this is going to be pirates, we're going to set the, ba the, the background color 3 to a nice red. We're going to set the text color of this to white. And we'll add a UI corner, and we'll also set the UI corner radius to 0 0.1 comma 0 uh, or maybe 0 0.03 comma 0 and we're going to add a UI stroke which will make it look better if we set the thickness to a okay we need to uh, set the apply stroke mode to border in order to in order to see it and we're just going to make it something like that we're going to put another one in here but this time it's going to be contextual and yeah I think I think this is good we're just going to center this Okay, so this is good. We're going to have another one, but this time it's going to be Marines. So we're just going to go here, set the text of this to Marines. And we're just going to position them right here. Okay, so Marines is going to be blue. So the background color of this will be a nice light blue. Something like that. Okay, this is good. Okay, yeah, this is, yeah, this is pretty good. Uh, what I want to do now is I'm going to make the team select UI invisible. And what we're going to do now is go into starter player scripts and UI controller. Inside of UI controller, we're going to add a, uh, another module script. But this time, it's going to be called uh, team select. And enter the energy bar script and just copy all of these variables in here from uh, players to main GUI and paste them in here. And what we're going to do now is um, uh, create some variables for the team select. Also, we need to rename this. So this one is going to be Marines, uh, actually Pirates. And the second one is going to be Marines. Also, we need to go to Teams and we're going to add uh, a team. Add a team. The first one is going to, of course, be Marines and duplicate it. And the second one is going to be Pirates. So Pirates is going to be red so team color is going to be red marines is going to be blue and we're just going to go back to the team select script and we're going to do local team select team select frame equals main gy can't wait for child team select and local pirates equals team select frame dot pirates and local marines equals team select frame dot marines Okay, so what we're going to do now is uh, team select frame dot visible equals true and marines, uh, actually pirates, local function. Uh, actually, I need to think about this. I think the, yeah, I think there is a, we can just do this pirates dot mouse button one click. connect function and we're also going to do the same thing for marines so marines dot mouse 
button one click phone connect function and what we're gonna do is whenever we press one of these we're gonna fire a remote event so uh, go to events and add a remote event and we're gonna call this one uh, team select or choose team and what we're gonna do is actually i think it should be spelled like this choose team with two o's and what we're gonna do is uh, get replicated storage so local replicated storage equals game get service replicated storage and uh, local events local events equals replicated storage from wait for child event and what we're gonna do in here is events dot choose team call fire server and we're gonna send uh pirates and in here we're gonna do events dot choose team call fire server and but this time it's going to be marines also what we need to do is to just set the um team select frame Dot visible to false and the do the exact same thing in here okay so what we're gonna do now is we will go to services and we're gonna add a remote a uh, module script and this one is just going to be called remote listener so remote listener and this is where we're gonna put all of our remote events which don't really which don't really need their own script so we can just put all of them here and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get replicated storage equals game call get service replicated storage local events equals um, replicated storage can wait for child dot events so we don't need uh, wait for child dot events and in here I'm going to do events dot team select dot team select dot, dot choose team dot on uh, server event can connect function this is going to take the player and the team team name and what we're going to do is player dot team equals uh, game dot themes uh, square brackets team name. Now we're going to play the game and see if this works. Also, we might need to lock the camera, but that's for later. We need to first of all test to see if this works. Okay, so this is loading. Okay, it's loaded. Now I'm in Marines by default. I'm going to choose Pirates. And now I'm in Pirates. Okay, so uh, one thing that we want to do is to set the default team to neutral. So we're just going to add another team and we're just going to call it uh, neutral. Or actually, maybe we can just name it to uh, uh, none. None. And we're just going to set it to white. And what we're going to do is go to teams in here and set the... I think I'm pretty sure there is a... Oh yeah, we need to do that from a script. So we're gonna do that right now. Oh okay. So this is it. We need to turn off uh select the marines and pirates and turn off auto assignable and only uh set uh, auto assignable to none. And now if you play the game, I'm pretty sure this is gonna work. Okay, so as you can see it does work and I'm able to choose my team. I'm going to choose marines and yeah, it does work. Okay, so now we need to lock the player's camera. And set it to a certain C frame. So what we're gonna do is in core objects, we're gonna add a folder. Uh, actually, we can just add a part, and we will uh, set it to uh, camera. To uh, we're, we're gonna rename it to. Uh, so let's think of an appropriate name. Team select camera. And we're gonna put it inside of core objects. We're gonna make sure it's anchored, and make sure that can collide is unchecked. Now we will position it somewhere. I'm going to put it here. Now, if you want to know where this is facing, right click on the part, and there should be a property called show orientation indicator, and that will show you where it's facing using the front surface. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we will position this part wherever you want your camera to be looking at. And inside of team select, what we're going to do is uh, get the camera. So local camera equals, equals uh, workspace current camera. And we're gonna do camera dot camera type equals enum dot camera type dot scriptable. And what we're gonna do now is camera dot C frame equals and we're gonna set it to uh, workspace call it for child core objects call it for child uh, team select camera. Okay, so now we need to set the uh, camera dot camera type equals enum dot camera type to dot custom. Do that in here and here. 
And if this loads, we should... Okay, it does not work for some whatever reason. Let's see why. Uh, requested, unable to... Oh, okay. That's a pretty dumb error. I forgot to, uh, to do dot C frame. Now, if you play the game, this will work. Okay, so as you can see, I just joined and my uh, camera is looking that way and I'm able to choose my team. I'm going to choose Marines and now we are Marines. And yeah, we can still double jump, we can dash, we can uh, combat. And yeah, that, I, I like the progress so far. What we're going to do next is probably uh, do some quests and stuff until we cover all of the basic stuff in Blocks Fruits. And that will be the end of this series. Okay, so if you guys enjoyed this, uh, make sure to subscribe, like the video, share it with your friends. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.